This week on The Browser, a local gamer paler than the whites of my dead eyes shits and pisses himself when he hears of a new game that doesn't feature a white male protagonist. A communist writes a manifesto that's a five tweet long thread on Twitter from the comfort of their upper middle class home before returning to their job as an influencer. And the man shrieks into the abyss only to receive in response nothing. Welcome, friendly assholes and asswipes. You see, I have a confession to make. This show has always painted itself as the last truly free and independent media you can take your news from. Hell, we even got some awards that we give ourselves. Look! But even though it pains me greatly, I have to inform you, for the sake of transparency, that we've actually been owned by a much larger corporation this whole time. And some of the news that we deliver to you may have been biased, if not outright fabrication. Yes, we are actually owned by the company, an all-encompassing entity which we refer to as Jeb. This strange entity eats everything it can touch and leaves nothing but ruin in its wake. Oh, uh, what's that? Oh, oh shit, you, you learned the, identi uh, the entity's true identity? Yeah, uh, alright. Oh. Dear viewers, I'm very happy to tell you that we finally know the true identity of this strange and dangerous entity. It's... I don't know how to say this, but it's your mom. In Righteous Crusade news, sweaty gamers have declared war on the narrative consultation organization known as Sweet Baby Inc. for their terrible practices in making our favorite games woke. Wokes or tr uh, trying to insert microtransactions into our favorite games and have made the gameplay objectively terrible. I don't have any proof for this, but I know they are. You know, like, gamers really are the most oppressed people. You should stand up for gamer rights. No, you see, it's clear that this is an important fight. Painters should not paint whatever they want. Like, I, I don't want to see something that my precious little eyes won't like. I want something nice, you know, or like a pair of tits or an attractive woman on that painting for the 500th time. You know, like, what the fuck is this drama? Is it worth even being called that? No, oh, it, it is. This is outrage. It's outrage at nothing. It's outrage at creators and artists wanting to do what creators do. And what do they do? Their own thing, not your thing. I, I have a stance on gamers. And what's that stance? Well, they're the fucking worst clientele to have. Because they consume games and then they think they know how it's done. I, I know how that take sounds, but it isn't that bad. I'm not saying people who say gameplay isn't fun because it's mindless or repetitive don't know what you're talking about. I'm saying people who say gameplay isn't fun because it's A but should be B don't know what they're talking about. In war news, the new center-right government in Portugal has started clamoring for the reintroduction of conscription. This has been uh, explained as the joint effort of Europe to stand up to uh, the Russians who are currently marching unopposed through their fifth Ukrainian's backyard this month. And frankly, I agree with this choice. The Portuguese armed forces are in complete disarray. No one wants to join, the equipment is rusting away, like our, our weapon tanks don't even work properly, and we also have a lack of officers, and that is exactly how we're going to fix the armed forces. Flood the bases with conscripts who don't know shit of what they're doing. The world's on fire, ladies and gentlemen. Europe, the continent once renowned for peace, is gearing up for war. And we, as a people, are more divided than ever before. But there is something so much worse than that that needs our attention. The Walking Dead went woke.
Why is everybody on that show in an interracial uh, relationship? Why not a full white relationship? It is clearly propaganda. In objectively flawless news, Time Sexiest Man of 2022 and Time's Ugliest Man of 2022, Putin's cum taster and his Imperial Majesty's favorite critic, Samus, has been found unfortunately dead by suicide. The cause of death? Well, it was 22 shots to the back of the head during his brief stay in Moscow. Although it should be said that Putin told us that his death was just a tragic mishap that others should learn from. And his death was definitely, totally, 100% just an accident, guys. To tell us more about Samus' death, we now turn to our live field reporter, Samish, reporting live in the field less than a meter from me. Samish? Thanks, Samish. The video game Lethal Company, which was made by a Zekers, that furry bitch who regularly fucks, therefore I want to be him, has recently updated his hit game to version 50, which includes many changes, such as Alfred from Batman, who's just as sexy by the way, and a baby. No, I'm not gonna give you context. Buy the game, fuckface. So now us employees can die even quicker to terrifying death machines or horrors beyond our comprehension. Elsewhere in entertainment news, your spouse should not be white. Are you kidding me? Didn't, didn't our parents show across the sea tell you this? Black people invented marriage. You are appropriating it. Divorce your spouse this instant and find someone who is black for you to marry. Like, I'm, I'm told they're bigger anyways. Uh, like, you don't want to be a racist, don't you? So click off and divorce them now. Yes, I did steal this joke from DJ Peach Copper. Uh, what are you going to do about it? That's right, nothing. Uh, what you will do is sit down where you are and watch a couple more minutes of unfiltered insanity. And that's it for entertainment this week. And now we turn back to our main reporter in the studio. Simish? Thanks, Samish. Wow, what a weirdo. Anywho, uh, you know, we've been talking about a lot of dark subjects here. And while I do want you to be scared so you keep watching me and the network pays me more money, you know, my favorite yacht has uh, started showing some rust, so I need to buy a new one. It's time to talk about something right, something fun. In war news, again, it pains me to say this, but I was wrong. Well, no, I'm, I'm always right, I was just wrong before. Somehow. Uh, the center-right Portuguese government isn't clamoring for conscription. The chief of state of the Armada, Henrique Gouveia Mel, most famous for only having felt uh, the touch of his penis, is the person who said that Portugal needs to reintroduce uh, conscription, something which was immediately shot down by every party in the government. I guess I'm not gonna scalp some Ruskies anytime soon. In T news, the king has cancer, and we here at the browser hope he recovers, so he can go back to wasting taxpayer dollars pretending the last 500 years of English history didn't happen. You know, instead of wasting it on pointless things like fi f fixing the National Health Service. 20 British persons watching, how does it feel to have a head of state you did not choose, and uh, twice that of a prime minister you did not elect? Oh boy, that, that sounds like it didn't suck. I genuinely can't relate. Say whatever you want about Portugal, Lisbon has been a Rooney Tune show recently, and I also have zero expectations for the government uh, that's been put in charge. But you know what? We erected that government. In burn it, burn it, burn it news, Seamus asked uh, Gemini to tell him more about some recent news while researching for this video, and it possibly aware of the fact that he's a sub, 
told him to Google it right the bottom bitch he is, before proceeding to immediately forget about everything it just said and sharding his brain with code no one bothered to complete. We'll update you on this story, if we can keep Simich from setting fire to his laptop and whoever programmed that goddamn abomination. In Are You Still Defending Them News? A airstrike on Gaza has killed three British aid workers, sparking further outrage directed at the Prime Minister of Israel. We reached out to the British Foreign Ministry for comment on what their planned response to this tragic event is, and they responded from underneath Netanyahu's desk with their head pointed suspiciously between the Israeli's Prime Minister's legs, and doing a weird sort of upward and downwards movement. Those guys don't matter. The Americans are, big, are making bank off of their weapons sale into Israel, and I hate to admit it, but we need Sweepy Joe on our side, so we aren't gonna do anything. You want action? Join the Israel Force. Queer? Uh, Wait, we're considered the great power? It remains to be seen what steps Western powers will take in regards to Israel's genesis. Pass in a special military operation in Gaza. But rest assured, Net Netanyahu has promised to ethically and morally exterminate all Palestinians and build for all Israelis a more inclusive and woke Jewish eth ethno state. In ugh, Twitter drama news, the Rock has come under fire for publicly not supporting anyone in the upcoming election. He explained that due to his support of Biden, his fans were divided, which was not his goal. Therefore, he will not publicly support anyone this election. This choice has divided fans, some calling him a coward for this move and saying that not supporting Biden is tantamount to supporting Trump. Now, I, I get that this may look like overreacting to some of my audience who are functioning adults. All two of you. But I assure you, it makes perfect sense. And I'll explain it. You see, we read boring lives. And celebrities aren't human. They're vessels for projection. If they're a muscular man, that is. If it's an attractive woman, they just help us boring dudes get off. But the point is, The Rock isn't a person. You know, a person with their own thoughts, feelings, fears, anxieties. Therefore, him saying he's not supporting Biden this election means he's in favor of an egomaniacal child. Because that's how things work. What kind of a species are we? What marks do we leave for our children? What will our future look like when we stop caring about war, lynchings, and prosecution, and care instead about lesbians kissing on the silver screen? In Portugal, 24% of the population is living in poverty, while the ultra-rich buy websites for $44 billion, all the while claiming they can fix hunger while single-handedly dodging anyone who gives them a plan to do so. I'm sure the United States has similar in poverty rates. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is your take on that argument on the internet, on what the English royal family is doing, on what X person said at Y time. It's fucking gossip. Gossip driven by algorithms whose goal is to build money for corporations. This was a plan, and it was a plan driven only by our impulses. Our impulses to complain and pay attention to the negative. The culture war we all hate to participate in? We have no one to blame it on but ourselves. You are with me or you're against me. Our very nature is conflict. The continent of peace and progressiveness was once renowned as a continent of the masters of warfare. If we're too chicken shit to insult each other face to face or kill e each other in all encompassing civil wars, well, we might as well get behind the screen and do the same until it slowly boils over into tragic accidents we will never learn from. It's in our nature. The Homo sapiens are the only human species on the planet because we killed every other one. If you were to take the internet to the Stone Age, 
cavemen would just call each other villains and sorcerers for having different colored clubs. This series will continue, just as the crackdown will. Just as long as our DNA stays the same. In I knew it news, a politician said something and this reaffirms your belief that people who don't worry what you do are the fucking worst. Welcome to Media Smarts. Media is all around us. We see and use it in every aspect of our lives. On TV, on the radio, and of course online, where we can find and do almost anything. It can all be a little overwhelming, and that's where Media Smarts can help. We believe that Canadians of all ages need critical thinking skills so they can be active, informed, and resilient digital citizens. Media Smarts is an internationally recognized leader in digital and media literacy. We build evidence based, age appropriate, and tested resources for students, teachers, parents, and all Canadians to help build these essential skills. We also conduct groundbreaking research that gives a voice to Canadian youth and informs all of the work we do. Interested? Here's how we can help. You can start by learning the basics with our Media Literacy and Digital Literacy 101 resources. Then explore our lesson plans, games and quizzes, tip sheets and guides, tutorials and workshops, videos. Oh, and one very important special guest, Canada's beloved house hip hop. Our free online learning resources cover topics like misinformation, cyberbullying, sexting, online hate, online privacy and safety, digital citizenship, body image, media violence, diversity and gender in media, digital well-being and screen time, and more. Choose a topic, a research report, a lesson plan, a workshop, or a game, and get learning about digital and media literacy. Let's get started. We're so glad you're here.